Hello friends, both old and new. I am John St. Baptiste and this is Music Makes the People Come Together. Part of Media Makes the People Come Together. Where we share amazing and eclectic media with amazing and eclectic people. Mostly talking about music and literature like to see some information about something else please leave it in the comments section down below while you're down there you can download this playlist also please like share and subscribe hit that notification bell like it owes you $20 and that's all the advertisement we're going to do today. So, today's playlist I find terribly interesting. Uh, before I get into it, I would like to apologize. This should have been a Friday, but we've been extremely busy at work. And after 14 hour days, sometimes you just want to go to sleep. I apologize. But here it is now. Things should be more regular in the future. There will be a live stream tomorrow. And I am looking forward to that. Give you a little more information here in just a little bit. But think about books that uh, very much interest you. So, today's playlist is songs and tracks that you really want to hate. But you just can't. We all have these. But I think this conglomeration that I've put together. Is apt in a number of ways. And uh, as always there's going to be an easter egg at the beginning of the end. As always, I'll do my best to explain as much as I can about the band and the artists and the track. So, without any further ado, track number one, we have Limp Biscuits cover of Faith. By George Michael. This is on their album Three Dollar Bill, y'all. Gosh, I can't stand Fred Durst. If a whale's vagina needs cleansing, a douche that large still might be able to pull it off. But you listen to this and you have to admit it's a great track. And it's a freaking banger. Uh, it well put together. Comes across great. And it's something you're not expecting. From a George Michael cover. Uh, yeah, there's a reason this playlist is called I Hate Myself for Loving You. Because, oh my gosh, just the fact that it's Limp Biscuit, I want to hate this. But I can't. Because it's well put together and I try to be as 
fair and unbiased as I possibly can. Next, we have Afro Man doing Because I Got High. Production quality on this is awful. Uh, and it's almost like a clickbait track but it's fun and you want to hate it but it comes on and you're like hey I'm going to pump that. Next, we have Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. Now, this track shaped an entire generation. And you would think that makes it great. It's mediocre at best. I'd give it a C+. Plus. But it's hard not to listen to all the way through. I personally think that Nirvana was... And I know they were young. But I think it was Dave Grohl's weakest project. Um, but... This, this track gets you moving. Plus, we've all heard it so many freaking times that, in general, we could just probably do without it. After that, we have Cherry Pie by Warrant. Whew. Okay. So, Warrant is and this song in particular was the best example of what you hate about butt rock but it's a fun track it's fun it comes on and you listen to it all the way through because it's a good time uh, you feel kind of dirty afterwards, but hey, it's fun. And <sighs> yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. After that, we have Wagon Wheel, done by the Old Crow Medicine Show. And the reason that this track is on this playlist is because of oversaturation. It is not by the remotest shred of any Uh, auspice. Not good. But we've all heard it so many times. And they didn't even write it initially. They just did a great job of performing it. And so due to oversaturation, it's a song that you wish, you wish you could hear for the first time every time you hear it. I don't know how else to put it. After that, we have Riding by Chameleon Air. Once again... Wonderful track. Once again, the reason this is on this list 
is because it has been so phenomenally overplayed. And even 20 years later, I, I, I still have heard it too many times, but it's great. And if it comes on the radio, I'm going to play it all the way through. Uh, this is off of Turn It Up, which came out in 2002. Now, apparently, he's not even making music. He, uh... He is working in the technology industry, doing some investments in development, which you don't see from a lot of young artists. A lot of times you see them just squander their money. Uh, but he's like, no, actually, this, this, this is a good idea. After that, we have the Sex Pistols doing God Save the Queen. This is a song that you want to hate but can't because it's so good. But a lot of people don't know what it's about. Uh, especially you younger folks. Who are out there uh, did not grow up during the Troubles. Uh, did not grow up during the Workers' Revolution in England. So, a lot of the two main themes of this you aren't familiar with. And even a lot of people my age, this wasn't front page news. Um, you know, which always baffles me. Uh, there were things going on during the Troubles that... Uh, never made the front page of the news. And if I hadn't grown up with the family that I grew up with, I would not know anything about them. But I do. Uh, and I'm guessing that I would say the reason that this is a song that you wish you hated, but you can't, is just because 98% of the people who enjoy it have no idea what it's actually about. Um, hey, more power to you. After that, we have Iris by the Goo Goo Dolls. Now first, old school Goo Goo Dolls fans say this is where they sold out and blah 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 ad nauseum ad nauseum. I can see the argument. I don't necessarily agree with it. Uh, this is from the movie City of Angels. When it comes down to it, it's a good song. It's a really good love song. And that's what it's supposed to be. Uh, 
even though you've probably heard it up teen million times. And you're probably sick of it. Finally, we're going to end this with first of the year, but Skrillex. Uh, Skrillex is uh, an American electronic musician. This came out in 2011. Basically, the reason that when we put this on their list of tracks that they want to hate but can't is because he's kind of a jerk. Like, Skrillex is kind of a jerk. And nobody wants to support that, but... If you make good music and you make good work... It's kind of hard not to support. It doesn't make you any less of a douchebag. Uh, there's that episode of South Park where they're all sniffing their own farts. And that makes me think of the Skrillex more than anything. But well, that's just my list. If you have tracks that you wish you hated, but you just can't, if they come on, you're going to sit and listen to them. Share it in the comments section below. Uh, also, tomorrow, I will be doing a live stream uh until i get my whole lineup for talking tolkien i i'm just kind of filling in the gaps and running by the seat of my pants but what i am soliciting you folk for is some ideas for books and novels and writers whether you think I've read them before or not. Uh, if I have, I will share what knowledge I have. If I have not, this is an adventure we can all take together. Uh, regardless, by then, I should have the whole uh, lineup sit all out and ready to go so i'm excited about that but i do want to share work with you every week uh there are also some other things in motion but i will talk about that to you more tomorrow i am going to go ahead and let you enjoy your day And I'm going to do my best to enjoy mine because I'm off today. I'm probably going to sleep for another couple hours and then uh, I'm not sure. But it will involve music or literature somehow. Anyway, I'm happy to share this with you. As I said before, like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let both the YouTube algorithm and myself know that you appreciate what I put up here. In the meantime, I'm going to let you enjoy your day. 
So please do me the kindness of P-O-U-R. Be excellent to one another. And party on.